2,000 years ago, in the mythical age, the feared demon king Anos Voldegode makes a shocking contribution to history by sacrificing himself to save humanity, but only a few demons and heroes are knowledgeable of this fact. Fast forward to the present, it is known that Anos may be reincarnated as one of the new students who would be enrolling in the prestigious Demon King Academy this year, and rumor has it that Anos, the newly reincarnated Demon King, would reclaim his position as the Demon King. On the first day of the examination, as the new students walk into the school, one of the students, Misha, feels embarrassed as her dad cheers for her at the top of his voice. She gets bumped into, and the letter she is holding falls on the floor. A boy picks it up and calls out the name on the letter, Misha Nikram, before handing it to her. She thanks him awkwardly and notices the boy's parents who are also cheering for him. The boy introduces himself as Anna's Voldegon, but they barely make it into the school before a boy of royal blood named Zeeps taunts them for coming to school with their parents, but they both ignore him until he attacks them. Anna's Voldegon insults him, telling him his magic power is so feeble that he missed it, and Zeeps threatens them with his magic powers, holding flames of fire in his palm. Anos lightly blows air with his mouth and Zeke's fire goes off. He likens Zeeps' fire to a light from a matchstick and Zeeps is angry and lashes out, but Anos asks him to stop and Zeeps finds himself unable to move. The other students are filled with awe at this display of power, but Anos walks off without a care in the world. During the first exam, the students are asked to duel with the rule that the loser fails while the winner passes. Anos is paired with Zeeps and Zeeps gloats as he talks of how he would conquer him. But Anos demonstrates his incredible magical powers by easily overpowering his Zeeps. However, instead of admiration, he is met with skepticism and ridicule from his peers, who label him as a hybrid because he's not of a royal heritage. He is also told of the rule that hybrids were not allowed to beat royals, but he pays them little regard. During the next exam, Anos meets Misha again. After the exam, he invites her to his house to celebrate getting in. At home, he announces to his parents that he passed. They are in awe and impressed. They revealed he was born only a month back and had a very rapid growth span. He introduced Misha to them, and they both immediately conclude he has brought home a wife. They all have dinner together. While Anos walked Misha home, she tells him the man that came with her to school is her guardian and not her parent. Anos asks her to be his comrade. They are ambushed along the way by demon lord Leorg, Zeeps' brother. Unbothered, Anos remains confident and once again makes a display of his incredible powers, easily taking down Leorg. After, he announces himself as Anos Voldegode, the true demon king of tyranny. Later on, we are shown a flashback of the past where Anos Voldegode gave up his life to bring peace to all realms with the help of Hero Kanon. Before his death, he asks that if Kanon is reincarnated in 2,000 years, they should be friends. In the present day, on Anos' first day of class, he encounters Misha Nekron again and he discovers that everyone thinks the founding demon king is Avos Dilhevia. Anos is stunned as he realizes that the wrong man has been passed down for thousands of years. Their homeroom teacher, who happens to be a demon of royal blood, walks in at that moment and introduces herself as Amelia Rudwell. She asks students to volunteer to be team leaders for an upcoming test, and Anos volunteers, however, his teacher refuses to make him team leader. She further explains that students in white uniforms who are popularly known as hybrids are not allowed to be team leaders, however, Anos insists that he would like to prove that hybrids are not inferior to royals, so his teacher agrees to this with the condition that if he fails the test, he would have to drop out of the school. During the team leader introductions, Anos discovers that Misha has a sister in the same class named Sasha. He is surprised that Misha is wearing the white hybrid uniform while Sasha wears the red uniform for royals since they both have the same parents. At the end of the class, Misha is the only person on Anos' team but Sasha walks up to them and taunts her sister, however, Anos defends Misha. Sasha challenges Anos with the demonic eye of destruction, but she is surprised when she realizes that he could do the same thing she can. He invites Sasha to join his team to get closer to her sister, and she refuses. Anos and Misha become well acquainted, and he learns that Misha is an outcast among the students. After school hours, Sasha meets up with Anos and Misha, and challenges them to a duel for the team competition exam, however, whoever loses has to join the winning team. On the day of the team competition exam, the students compete to showcase their skills. Team Anos, which is Anos' team, and Team Sasha, which is Sasha's team, start their duel. Sasha has impressive magical powers, but it is nothing compared to Anos' powers, and despite the suspicions and bias against him, he effortlessly defeats his opponents using a variety of powerful spells. Sasha is left with no choice but to join Anos' team because of the contract that they had made. After the exams, Anos takes Sasha and Misha home to celebrate their win and his parents were once again thrilled, concluding that he has brought home his second wife. They all had dinner together and later that night Anos walks Sasha and Misha home. He also notices that the girls have gotten a bit closer. When they arrive at home, Misha goes in first but Sasha stayed back to discuss with Anos. She asks him if one's fate can be changed and he assures her that it can be changed by destroying it. Before Anos leaves that night, Sasha kisses him and awkwardly tells him that it is a kiss between friends. 
Later on, Sasha recalls how she had settled her differences with her sister. Meanwhile, Anos continually gains the attention of his classmates due to his formidable powers, but others become even more determined to bring him down. After a while, Misha tells Animus that she doesn't know what to get her sister for her birthday and he assures her that Misha would be okay with anything she gets her. Sasha walks into class right after Misha asks about her and she seats next to them at the back of the class. Their homeroom teacher, Amelia, walks into the class and announces that they would be having a lecture from one of the seven elder demon emperors. Anos tells Sasha that he has never heard of them, but Sasha tells him the history of how they came to be. Anos finds the story odd, but he speaks no further on it. Amelia warns Anos to be on his best behavior during the lectures and he assures her there is nothing to worry about. Later on, one of the demon lords is introduced to the class, his name is Ivis Necron and Anos eventually discovers that Sasha and Misha are related to him. As Ivis walks into the class, Anos immediately stands up and greets him like an acquaintance however, Ivis doesn't remember him. But even though Amelia asks to expel Anos immediately, Ivis asks her not to. Evis also tells Anos he has lost his memories from 2,000 years ago. Anos puts his palm against Ivis's forehead to make him remember him. This shocks everyone in the class. The lecture begins and the students are taught a Necton family secret technique of magic. Anos also discovers that Misha and Sasha are direct descendants of Ivis. After lectures, Anos and Ivis briefly discuss and Ivis tells Anos that his memories from 2,000 years ago has been erased and someone called Elvos Dilhevia is passing himself as the demon lord. Students are asked to go into the demon palace for a test and they are to retrieve magical items from the palace, but Anos is quite familiar with the palace since he has lived there in his past life. The trio embark on the quest to retrieve the Sword of Destruction from the lower levels of the castle, which is necessary to win. Anos suggests to Misha to take one of his items, the Phoenix Robe, for Sasha's birthday to enhance her flame magic. During the quest, Anos also discovers Sasha and Misha share the same birthday. After they find the robe and scepter, Sasha stabs Misha while Anis is not watching and when Animus discovers her, she claims she was never their ally but was waiting for a chance to betray them. Animus claims she is lying since her demonic eyes should have activated under intense emotion, but they did not. Sasha flees with the robe and scepter, claiming she hates Misha. Animus revives Misha and she reveals to him that she will disappear the moment she and Sasha turn 15 and that she is not supposed to exist. Later on, we're shown a flashback of the past where Ivis split Sasha into two personalities before she was born. After Ivis had gone through with this procedure, he revealed that when the twins turned 15, they would fuse into a single powerful demon, and this is how Misha came to be. Misha tells Anos that she wants to make up with Sasha even though she will soon cease to exist and Anos tells her he will help her only on the condition that she lives like she believes tomorrow exists. They go after Sasha and catch up with her. Misha asks Sasha if she hates her, so Sasha challenges Anos to a duel and states that if he can control the magic in the circle she creates, she'll answer Misha's question. Anos agrees and he easily overpowers Sasha. She then reveals she wants to save Misha. A flashback reveals some of Misha and Sasha's past. It is shown that for the last 15 years, Sasha has been grooming Misha to hate her for this very moment. She intends to give her life over Misha, but the only requirement of doing so is that Misha rejects her. But Misha refuses to. With this, the two girls get emotional and they make amends. Anos reveals that if he sends them back in time, they can fuse with their unborn fetuses, so they will be born as true twin sisters. As they begin the process, they are interrupted by Ivis Necron, who stabs Anos through the heart. Anos heals up immediately and strikes Ivis, but the guardian god of time appears, Hugo Laraviez, and he won't allow Anos to meddle with the time. Instead, he heals Ivis's deathly wound and tasks him with annihilating Anos. Ivis now has the power to control time, which means that even Anos has to think on his feet a bit, and he ends up getting hurt by Ivis again. This, though, seems like nothing to Anos, who is quickly resurrected, prompting Ivis to stop time in response. Anos explains to Sasha and Misha that if they simply walk behind him, he'll deal with any injustices in their path starting now. They both say they believe in him and pledge themselves to him, so he sends Sasha and Misha to fuse with their unborn selves. He then kills Ivis and revives him. Anos returns all his unaltered memories, revealing Ivis only betrayed him because his memories had been altered by someone working for Avos Dilhevia, so he put him on the task of investigating the other elder demon emperors in the hopes of figuring out who killed him and in hopes of finding Avos Dilhevia. Sasha and Misha return now as true sisters. Despite having saved Misha and altering the past, Anos decides to turn in his scepter to get a perfect score on their test. He also gives Misha a ring from his collection to enhance her magic, along with the phoenix robe he gave to Sasha. A flashback shows Anos being impressed by the exploits of one of his followers, Shin, so he grants him his wish to be resurrected, though with a condition. 
Since Shin isn't particularly adept with source magic, he would return without his skills and memories. This is in contrast to the hero Kanan, whose source magic is uniquely powerful, he is constantly resurrected, and perhaps always will be. In the present, Amelia, the homeroom teacher, announces that a royal student famous for his sword skills is transferring into the academy. She also announces that the scepter team Anos turned in into missing, so they will be scored 70 out of 100 in the meantime. Sasha is furious. She claims it's unfair, a hybrid. Missa Iliero, who also agrees with Sasha Anos, however, casually stands up and took the scepter out of another student, returns it to Amelia, and whispers to her that should have done a better job of stealing and hiding it. After the class, Misa informs Anos she is a Unitarian. Also, that Melhais Baran, another elder demon emperor, is a Unitarian. She takes Enos, Sasha, and Misha to the building where they hold Unitarian meetings. Miss reveals she has a royal father and her mother is a spirit. Her father has never spoken to her, but he gave her a sword and a half. Miss and the rest of her Unitarian classmates ask to join Enos' team, and he decides to let them join his team if they prove themselves. The academy begins magic sword lessons where Anos and the transfer student, Lei Glanzutli, are the only ones strong enough to wield magic swords. In class, they ask to join Anos' team, disregarding his royal status to Amelia's dismay. Anos refuses only the condition that Lei teams up with Misa and the rest of the Unitarians to challenge him in the next team exam duel. During the duel, Anon took on Lei while Misha and Sasha took on Misa and the Unitarians. Misha and Sasha defeated Misa and the Unitarians. Anos duels against Lei using just a tree branch while Lei vaguely remembers having dueled Anos before. Anos finally claims victory and suspects Lei is the reincarnation of someone from his former life. Lei promises to defeat Anos at their next duel. After the duel, Anos invites home Lei and Misa along with Sasha and Misha for dinner. There, he declares Lei and Misa his team members, and as always, his parents enthusiastically celebrate his victory. After dinner, Anos' mom reveals she almost lost him while she was pregnant with him. Misa and Lei are out getting air, and Lei thanks her for helping him out during the duel. She is surprised that he is treating her nicely, unlike other royals she knows. He also asks if she ever feels sick, because he heard that half-demon, half-spirit doesn't live long. He is surprised she is still agile after using spirit magic. At school, Amelia announces that two students have been chosen as competitors for the Magic Sword Tournament, Lei and Anos. After class, Anos tells Lei he suspects there is some kind of ulterior motive. There's no way the royals want a hybrid to win over a royal. Misa comes around to tell Anos that Melhais Boron, who happens to be one of the seven elder demon emperors, is around. Anos meets Melhais, he falls to his knees immediately and claims that while he believes that his memories were erased at some point, he is convinced Anos is the demon king of tyranny. He tells Anos what happened to him since Anos died 2,000 years back. Melis pleads with Anos to drop out of the tournament and Anos assures him he'll think about it. Anos gets home to find Misha has cooked him a meal with his mom's help. While they eat, Anos' mom reveals that Amelia had come by the house earlier to announce to his parents that he'll be participating in the tournament and the whole school would be rooting for him. To show his gratitude to Misha, Anos takes her on an outing the next day. They visit a magic model shop and they both go into the workshop where Misha demonstrates the making of a model. Anos also gives it a try. He creates a tiny model of the whole town with precise details. The shop owner is in awe and she pleads with him to sell it to her but he refuses. After leaving the shop, Anos makes the model into a ring and wears it on Misha's finger. They visit a cat cafe and here Ivis comes in the disguise of a cat and tells Anos that someone above Melhez is actually in control of the Unitarians. On the day of the tournament, Ivis tells Anos some more information that he is yet to uncover. Later that day, Anos and Misha come across Lei at the front of the Law North Magic Hospital. Lei tells them he came to see his mother, but he also rejects Anos' offer to help heal her. Before the tournament, Ivis meets up with Anos again in the disguise of a cat. Ivis reports to Anos telling him, Melius has nothing to do with the tournament, and also that Lei's mother is critically ill and close to death. Anos' dad gives him a sword before the tournament. Anos easily defeats his first opponent, Krut. Amelia's brother angers Amelia. Lei also wins his match. Backstage, Anos and Misha watch from the sidelines as Lei dueled. They see that Lei is representing the Log North Magic Sword Association in a royalist outfit. They confront him backstage about this, and he claims they offered him enough money to live off for the rest of his life and the role of Demon Lord. He also says he can't be friends with them anymore and tells Anos he's going to kill him, which prompts a short confrontation in which Lei takes a swing at Anos and Anos puts his palm against Lei's chest and he realizes that there's some magical gear in Lei's body, a contractual magic ring designed to destroy his source under certain conditions. He is a hostage. Doing the royalists' bidding, they have some kind of leverage over him. After he wins his next match, Anos gives his mother and his student fan club and goes with Misa to visit Lei's mother, Sheila. He and Misa then head to the hospital. There they meet Lei's adoptive mother, Sheila, who has spirit disease. She reveals to Anos that Lei is being controlled by the royalists in exchange for treatment for her. She also explains a bit about spirits and her condition. 
Anos determines that he can't heal her without more knowledge, but Sheila is happy to die just so long as she can grant Lei the wish of fighting Anos to his full potential. Afterwards, Misa volunteers to help her so Anos links Sheila and Misa's sources, which is risky, but Misa is willing since she believes in Anos, and because she believes Lei should become embroiled in the fight between the Unitarians and the Royalists. Meanwhile, Isabella and the girls are jumped by Amelia, who tries to take custody of Anos' sword on the vague pretext of an official ruling, but she is denied. Annoyed at the rebuff, she gets physical, fighting against the fangirls. The girls end up completely battered, Anos' mom, Isabella, is very surprised by Amelia's behavior. But Amelia smugly explains that hybrids are just thieves eavesdropping on her classes. She's still fuming about Anos embarrassing her brother. She tries to finish Isabella off, but the hybrids intervene again, telling her to run, and ends up getting even more battered. They're resilient, but Amelia kills every one of them, eventually stalking Isabella until Anos suddenly appears and intervenes in the nick of time. When Anos arrives, he freezes Amelia in place and then heals all the girls. He asks all their names and they tell him and he says he'll never forget them as he is indebted to them. He angrily teleports Amelia to an arena where he stabs and fatally wounds her. He insists he'll heal her only if she admits to him being the demon king of tyranny. She eventually does, but he kills her anyway. He then resurrects her as a hybrid to punish her. She does not realize this initially, and she immediately calls him a lowly hybrid. When she finds out she has been made a hybrid, she tries to kill herself, so he cursed her. No matter how many times she dies, she'll always be reborn a hybrid. She will forever be the thing she hates most. Either she changes her point of view, or she lives in eternal torment. Back at the hospital, Lei stops Misa to protect her life force. He then has a conversation with Sheila, where she tells him to live his life the way he wants to. Lei leaves before Anos returns. The next day, Anos and Lei are to duel each other in the finals. Before the duel commences, special rules are implemented that impact both Lei and Anos. A magical bracelet are clasped around both of their hands. If a person's bracelet gets destroyed, he loses. The bracelet is altered to drain both of their magical powers, but Lei's bracelet is just an accessory to give him the upper hand against Anos. Lei praises Anos for his ability to fight despite his magic being drained. However, Lei decides to fight on his terms. He slashes his shoulder with his sword, reaching his contract, and he goes all out on Anos. At the end of the duel, Lei cuts off Anos' arm with his sword, but he gets killed by Anos, who emerges victorious in the end. They are both teleported to another realm. There it is revealed that Melhais was the mastermind behind the tournament. Anos is challenged by Melhais and two other demon lords, Gaios Anzim and Idol Anzio. However, Lei takes out Gaios and Idol. When confronted, Melhais reveals he has Sheila and offers a trade. He'll treat Sheila only if Lei swears fealty to the royalists. He refuses and whole Anos distract Melhais, and Lei escapes the dimensional prison to save his mom. Melhais attacks Anos, but his magic is easily deflected by Anos. When Melhis notices Anos is starting to regain his power, he escapes into an absolute space from where he attacks Lei and Sheila. Anos shields them from the attacks. When Melhis is about to conquer them, Sheila transforms into her true form, which is a sword. Lei uses this sword to slash the absolute space. Anos then confronts his stunned Melhis. He overpowers him and frees him from his brainwashing. Returning to the arena, he asks Melhis to revive the two elders that were killed earlier. He sees a man wearing a mask in the shadows who he assumed to be Avos de Hivia. The makes man, however, disappears before Anos could confront him. Anos is declared the winner of the tournament. He then announces that his sword helped him win, and it is infused with love by his father who made it for him. His dad is moved to tears. After reviving Lei, he also revives Sheila. She now looks more healthy and is completely healed. Afterwards, Sasha gives Anos a sword as a commemorative gift and kisses him on his cheek. 2,000 years ago, Anos tells Hirokanon that he wants to end the war. However, he is forced to injure Jurga during a confrontation. In the present, a new homeroom teacher, Menu Vistoriev, takes over Amelia's class. She announces that the students will have inter-academy classes in the human realm. Anos, Misha, Sasha, Lei, and Misa have a training match on the field. After practice, Anos meets with Melhis, and Melhis informs him that it seems Gaios and Idol have been possessed by someone suspected to be Ovos de Hivia. Afterward, Anos takes Lei to a place stashed with swords that all belong to him and asks him to pick one, and he picks a sword that used to belong to Anos's subordinate from years back. Anos has suspicions that Lei is the reincarnation of Hirobanon. Weeks later, Class 1 and Class 3 students are asked to travel to Giridite. Also, any student that doesn't get there in 10 days will not be eligible to take part in the class. They all head to Giridite for the inter-academy classes. Anos teleports himself, Lei, Misha, Sasha, and Misa to the city within seconds. Anos and Sasha explore the town on their way to the Hero Academy Arklaniska. At the gate, and she denies them entry, telling them outsiders aren't allowed in, they meet Eleanor Bianca, a third-year student. After they tell her they are from the Demon Academy, she escorts them inside the school. They visit a library and Eleanor hands them a book about Hero Kanon and Anon Voldegode. Sasha calls out the inaccuracy of Kanon's victory over the Demon King of Tyranny. 
but Anos stops her. Afterward, Eleanor tells them about Jurga Kanon, an elite class of reincarnated heroes. A boy meets them in the library and he declares himself the reincarnation of the first heart of Hero Kanon. They also meet another student, Laos Kanon Jilfer, who claims to be Kanon's reincarnation, which Anos doubts. Lowe's attacks Anos with fury, but Anos easily knocks him off, defeating Laos. As Amos is about to leave, Eleanor tells him not to look for the reincarnation of Kanos because Kanon was murdered 2,000 years ago by a human. On the tenth day, the third-year Demon Academy students made it to the Hero Academy, and they are surprised to find that Anos and the rest of him have been there since the first day they set out. Inside the Hero Academy, Revist Aini, a third-year student from Demon Academy, confronts Anos about how he made it to the Hero Academy so fast and he tells him he does not recognize him as the reincarnated Demon King. On the first day of the Inter-Academy classes, a demonstration of recreation is held. The Hero Academy's representative, Ledriano, easily performs the task, while Revis struggles to do the same. Anos then reveals that the Hero Academy rigged the demonstration by removing the concealment ent place on his tool. Later that night, Ivis comes around in his usual disguise and tells Anos some new information he uncovered during his investigation. Misha and Sasha interrupt, and with Anos, they head to a festival where they see Lei and Misa on a date, buying a shell necklace together. The next day, the fangirls fall on Evermiss's necklace, pestering her about who got it for her. Anos tells Misha, Sasha, and lay the story behind shell necklaces. It is a symbol of love between two people. As the inter-academy exams commence at Lake Saime, when Anos offers to take the exam with his team, Revas also decides that he wants to do it instead. Their teacher, Menu, is confused, but eventually picks Revas and his team to represent the school in the exam. During the exam, Revas' team struggles against the Hero Academy students. They almost lose their lives. Anos reveals that the Hero Academy has cheated by having holy water mixed in with the lake water to weaken the demons. Men are very pissed, but Anos asks her to be calm. He rescues Revis' team. Ejecting their unconscious bodies into the water, he revert of a wound he sustained underwater. Anos challenges the Hero Academy students to another duel and uses a spell to evaporate the lake. For the next round of the Inter-Academy exams, Anos' team notices that the Hero Academy students have put up a barrier that is enhancing their power while it drains Anos and his team members' powers. Misha decides to build a castle in the center of the barrier. Anos teleports himself and Misha to the center and protects her while she builds the castle. Anos is then confronted by students of the Hero Academy, including another female student, who is supposedly the reincarnation of Kanan named Zeshia Kanan Ajazika. They try to attack Misha and the castle she is building, but Anos easily deflects their attacks. After Misha completely builds the castle, Sasha and Lei take on and defeat Lowe's and Hain Kanan Iord, respectively. Afterward, Anos takes on Ledriano and Zeshia. They use a spell that increases their energy to empower them, and Anos counters this by asking the fan club to sing him a cheer song, which surprisingly increased his powers too. He can land a hit on Ledriano, taking him by surprise. Everyone begins to hear a mysterious voice telling the Hero Academy students to kill the demons. It is a brainwashing spell cast on them. Anos warns Zeshia not to release his spell, but she does it anyway to cause a source explosion. After gets a hold of Zeshia's source and hears Eleanor's voice calling for him, she asks Anos to head to the shrine. Misha is in the shrine when she runs into a furious Diego Kanan at Jezica, director of the Hero Academy. He attacks her, calling her a filthy demon. He stabs her repeatedly in a crazed daze. Animus appears and flings Diego across the hall into the wall when he reveals Diego's true form, he is an animal. The students suddenly begin to attack the demon students, this time more violently than before. Animus kills Diego and he and Misha meet Eleonore. And when she is asked who she is, she reveals that she is magic. Eleanor reveals she was created with taboo magic and further reveals that she is human magic and her source enabled her to create humans with powers. She asks Anos to free her from her bondage to save the students of the Hero Academy and he does so. After Eleanor is freed from her captivity, the students immediately come back to their senses. Eleanor reveals the truth about her origin and the creation of the Hero Academy, the students, the owner of the voice that hypnotized the students, her existence, and how Kanan was killed. She reveals that this all happened because of Jirga's deep-rooted hate for the demon folks. Although he is long gone, she is a remnant of his memories. Her role is to create source clones. She calls them her children, people robbed of their lives to fuel hatred. Eleanor pleads with Anos to kill her because she thinks she deserves it, but just as Anos is about to grant Eleanor's wish, the female reincarnation of Hero Kanan, a girl named Zisha, appears and pleads with Anos to save her mother. Anos refuses to kill Eleanor, instead he offers to make all of Eleanor's children happy. However, they are confronted by a clone of Diego. Suddenly, three of the elder demon emperors show up with a mysterious figure, who claims to be Avos Dilhevia. Alvos taunts Anos, telling him he plans to change the world and kill the heroes as soon as Anos disappears. Anos rescues Eleanor and the other students and they all leave the academy. A few days later, heroes declare war again the demand throughout the city, and three of the seven elder demon emperors and also Ovos declare war against humans. Meanwhile, 
Anos has a meeting with the remaining elder demon emperors. There, his friends vow to help him as well. Missa tells Lei she is worried something might happen to him, so he takes half of her necklace and holds onto it, declaring his love for her. Later, Evo's teammates all take on Evo's soldiers, and Anos asks the elder demon emperors that are on his side to go after the rest of the elders, and decides to confront Evo's by himself. When he gets to his castle, the two men attack each other, and Anos realizes it is Lei that is behind the mask. He is the reincarnation of Kanon. Later on, we're shown a flashback of the past where Lino, the mother of all spirits, tells the spirits that she's going to Dell's Gate. Nerskelia, the father of the gods, suddenly appears and announces that Lino has been chosen to bear a special child that would defeat the demon king Anos. However, Lino refuses, but Nuskelia attempts to impregnate her against her will. Just a moment later, Anos arrives with one of his demon generals, a formidable man named Shin Reglia, and rescues Lino by destroying the physical body of Nuskelia. He asks Shin to watch over her, but Lino refuses. However, she finally agrees when Animus tells her that it's a long way to Delsgade and Nosgalia could easily resurrect himself and try impregnating her with the divine child. On her journey back to Delsgade, Lino is surprised at how gentle and caring Shin is. They befriend each other along the way, but on their way back to the spirit forest, they encounter some spirit who inform Lino that the spirit forest is being destroyed. Leno senses a hidden presence and challenges the stranger, but it turns out to be a kid named Anoshu Political. In the present day, Anos is seen strolling into the Demon King Academy. He runs into some members of his fan club alongside Sasha and Misha Necron on the way. He notices that Sasha has gotten a new hair ribbon, but Sasha blushes at this. Misha, her twin sister, points out that Sasha is embarrassed by this and Anos ranks her ribbon at the bottom of the middle-class ribbons in Delsgade with the thought that it would make her feel better, but Sasha feels humiliated by this. Misha sighs at this and tells Anos that noticing things way too much could get him in trouble. Meanwhile, Misa arrives with Lei and the other members of the fan club tease them about the duo coming together, but Misa denies anything going on between them out of embarrassment. Later on, their homeroom teacher arrives in class and introduces two new students from Hero Academy who turn out to be Eleonora Bianca and her daughter whom she had rescued, Zethia Bianca. Eleonora and Zethia take a seat beside Anos before thanking him and asking him if they could join his team. Erdame Dijon, the new homeroom teacher, Born before the Seven Demon Lords, lived for over 2,000 years as a member of the Four Evil Royals, tells the class that Anos is the real Demon Lord and not Avos de Lhivia. Erdome asks him to address the class, but Anos humbly tells them that he doesn't expect them to treat him differently. Before returning to his seat, Anos asks Erdomaid why he's living in another human's body by revealing him to be Nauscalia, the father of the gods who had tried impregnating Lino, the mother of the spirits, 2,000 years ago. After giving him a serious spanking and killing him in front of the entire class, Anos resurrects him and returns to his seat, but to the bewilderment of the class, Nauscalia continues the class like nothing serious had happened. Later on, Anos tells his friends and subordinates that the only reason why Nauscalia would resort to teaching in the academy would be because he had promised someone. He tries to discover who Nosgalia was doing a favor by teaching at the Demon Academy, and he eventually finds out that Nosgalia was trying to fulfill a promise to the child of God that had been destined to find him. He shares his thoughts with his subordinates, and Sasha asks what he plans to do about this, but Anos vows to find this child of God and put them in their place. His subordinates agree to split into groups to discover who the child of God could possibly be, and Anos sets out to do some research. Before Eleonore sets out to carry out some research, she gets a message from the three reincarnations of Hero Cannon who tell her that they had noticed the creation of a strange spell and the presence of some strange people in Dell's Gate. While this occurs, Missa reports to Lei and tells him that she had found no information on the foretold child of God, and she wonders who the person could possibly be. Lei tells her to stay as far away from the battle as possible and collects one half of the necklace he had previously gifted her. He also tells her that he would protect her wherever she needed him to or even run a million miles if he ever caught word of her being in danger, but Misa tells him that she feels the exact same way and they share a kiss. A dark figure steps out and introduces himself as Jurad Azrima. Meanwhile, Anos tells his fan club that he plans on organizing a special parade to reveal that he is the newly reincarnated Demon King. He also asks them to compose a special number that would unite humans and demons as they would be rendering it on that day, but they are suddenly interrupted by Sasha and Misha, who inform them some of Anos' subordinates have been taken down by an unknown assaulter. Misha and Sasha inform Anos that they're going to discover who the villain is, but Anos warns them that they would probably be facing a demon general from over 2,000 years ago. However, Misha and Sasha are not phased by this and they rush off to the aid of their other companions. After they leave, Animus rushes into his castle and meets Melhis battling with a stranger. Unfortunately, Melhis is struck down with one blow as soon as he arrives. The stranger who introduces himself as Zake Ozma casts a spell on Melhis that restricts him from being reincarnated. However, 
Anno smugly tells Zeke that as soon as he kills him, Malvis could easily revive himself since he had stopped time before his death. He also realizes that Zeke is a demon general who served under Erda Maid and was now working for Nausgalia, the father of the gods. Nausgalia had in turn granted him the ability to withstand the effects of time. Zeke tells Anos that he would admit defeat if Anos answers all three of his questions with 18 guesses, but Anos would momentarily lose his powers for five seconds if he missed any of the questions after using up his guesses. Anos agrees to Zeke's terms and conditions and they sign a contract. After answering Zeke's first two questions, Anos discovers that the child of God is one of his subordinates. Zeke asks him to predict who it is and Anos chooses Misa, but Zeke denies this. He also chooses Misha and Sasha because he assumes that the divine twins who are born with divine intent would probably be more likely since Misa had been ruled out. He suddenly realizes that Zeke had given himself false memories in an attempt to win regardless of his answers, but Zeke tells him that he found out a little too late because he had already lost as soon as he signed the contract. Zeke attacks Anos instantly and tries taking advantage of the fact that he had lost control of his powers for five seconds, but Anos survives the fatal blow and kills Zeke before reviving Melhais. He tells Melhais to assist the others in battle and dashes out in search of his comrades. Meanwhile, Lei and Misa encounter a stranger who tells them that he works under one of the four evil royals and he has been ordered to steal Misa's source. He further reveals that Misa is the child of Lino, the mother of all spirits and her source could be used to control other spirits. The stranger almost makes good on his promise but Lei rises to Misa's defense and defeats him despite all odds. Later on, Misha and Sasha are seen assisting Revis, the third-year student who leads the demons in their inter-campus competition. While Sasha heals Revis with healing magic, he tells them that their homeroom teacher, Ms. Manu, has been captured by Rinka Therens, who happens to be a female member of the four evil royals. Revis reveals that he has put a tracking spell on Rinka and they could easily discover her whereabouts while using the spell. Misha and Sasha go after Rinka, and they succeed in catching up to her. Rinka reveals that she had only used Ms. Menu to lure them away from Anos, and she planned to fuse their sources before making them the vessel of Avos Dilhivia, the new demon king. Stasha and Misha are infuriated by her words, and Sasha attacks her, but she is no match for Rinka Therens, the fourth evil royal who had existed for over 2,000 years. Misha cries with rage at her sister's battle wounds. Misha attacks Rinka with her formidable ice magic, but she is defeated by Rinka, who diverts her powers and pierces her with her ice crystals. Rinka laughs wickedly with high hopes that she has won the battle, but she is surprised when Misha revives herself and demonstrates her true mythical prowess. Rinka is stunned by the depth of Misha's powers and the two brace themselves for a ferocious battle. Meanwhile, Eleanor and Zisha are engaged in a fierce battle with Zabrogeist, a lieutenant under the Scarlet King, who happens to be another member of the four evil royals. Zabro attempts to steal Eleanor's source by draining her and Zisha's powers, but Eleanor manages to defeat him at the last minute before revealing that the true secret behind human magic is emotions, and she would never allow others to gain hold of her powers just so they could turn Zisha and her other children into puppets. After Anos and his subordinates had finished conquering their opponents, they gather around for a meeting and Lei shows Anos the other half of Mrs. Sword that he had wrested from their opponent. Anos collects the swords and joins the two halves together, and it turns out to be the sword of Shinreglia, one of his demon generals from 2,000 years ago. They're all puzzled by this revelation when Anos suddenly smirks and tells his subordinates that their next training field is a harnessed. Upon their arrival at a Hartharn, Anno's fan club jumped with excitement at the fact that they had just teleported with Anno's, especially since sharing the same air with him could be classified as a first kiss. Anno's tells his subordinates that he'll be heading into town to get information on the location of the spirits, but he runs into a girl named Lena who was being attacked by some wake humans. After Anno's rescues her, Lena reveals that she had lost all her memories, but the only thing she could remember is her name. She also reveals that during her stay at the town's tavern, she had heard all sorts of information. Anos asks Lena if she knows how to get to the spirit forest, but Lena reveals that the only way he could see the spirits is if they're so happy that they decide to come out from their hiding place. She also reveals that the spirits are always in a joyous mood whenever there's an eclipse, but prophecy had recently been released which stated that an eclipse would occur in a fortnight. However, Anos tells Lena that he doesn't have that much time, so he speeds up the occurrence of the eclipse. After the eclipse occurs, Lena asks Anos if she can accompany him, but Misha advises him against this, especially since she could turn out to be an enemy. However, Anos tells her that he senses no evil intent in her and allows Lena to accompany him to the borders of the spirit realm. When they arrive, Anos' fan club moves around in a frenzy and Anos wonders what the excitement's all about. He is suddenly approached by one of the girls who gave him a strange object that she calls the Anasu's fan club. She further reveals that they had gotten it from a Taravan in town, but as soon as Anos hands it back to her, her face goes red with embarrassment, and she rushes back to the other girls to tell them that Anos had touched her indirectly. The spirits appear at that moment and tease the girls while expressing how amused they were by their tactics. Anos recognizes a spirit named Tiffy and calls out to her. 
He asks her if she can lead them to the spirit forest. Enos waits behind as his subordinates leave before telling an unknown presence that he could reveal himself. Nuskelia, who is still in possession of Erdomaid's body, steps out of a fog and tells Enos that he prefers to stay in the background. Upon their arrival in the spirit forest, the spirits tell Enos that the four evil royals were at the spirit academy and Enos asks to be led to them. On their way to the spirit academy, the spirits study Lena and comment about how she looks so much like Lino, the mother of spirits, but they sadly admit that Lino had been dead for over 2,000 years. Misa is saddened by this as she reveals that she had only recently found out that Lena was her mother and she was hoping to see her on this trip. The spirits suddenly flock to her side and sniff the air around her. They tell her that she smells a lot like Lino and Misa is gladdened by this. After they arrive at the Spirit Academy, they encounter Gilisris, the Scarlet Monument King who happens to be a member of the Four Evil Royals. Anos questions him for sending Zeke to his demise but Gilisris tells him he didn't mean for things to go that way. Anos notices Aegis Code, the King of the Netherlands, and confronts him for joining hands with the Four Evil Royals but Aegis tells him that things were not exactly what they seemed. Lena suddenly remembers Union, a member of the Spirit Academy, and calls out to him. And Union turns out to be a talking tree that bolts the doors of the Spirit Academy. He informs them that they would not be allowed exit from the Spirit Academy if they didn't take a particular test and only those that score 90 marks could exit the building. He also tells them that their spirits would be captured by the Demon Fox if they failed to pass the trials, however, it would be granted an audience with the Spirit King if they passed three trials. But Anos is not phased by this and he assures Union that they would all get perfect scores on the test. Misha tells Anos to speak for himself cause she was not so good with books but Anos promises to help them. Gilistris laughs at this and tells Anos that they could never win. He also coerces Anos to sign a contract with him. He tells Anos that he would claim his powers if any of his subordinates failed the test. However, he would tell Anos who he is working for if Anos' team passes the test. After his bet with Gilistris, Anos spends the next week drilling all forks of knowledge from the Book of Spirits into his subordinates. While poring over the books, Anos realizes that there is no written word on Lena and this puzzles him since the Book of Spirits contains knowledge on all spirits. However, he notices that one page has been ripped out and it talks about the Love Fairy Fran. Anos tells her of this but he doesn't reveal his suspicions that she is the Love Fairy. Later on, Anos and his team are finally put through their first trial which involves a written exam. But when the scores are announced, the four evil royals score below 90. However, everyone on Anno's team gets a perfect score, with Zeshia scoring 150 out of 100. Gilishris is angered by this, and he claims that foul play was involved. After inspecting the scripts, Gilishris finds questionable answers with someone submitting answers such as I don't know or a blank page. However, Anos tells him that before the era of destruction, even a blank page becomes a perfect score, because honesty was considered a great virtue. Anos cheekily asks Gilishris if he thought they wouldn't pass the test just because their answers are wrong. And Union announces the start of the second trial. However, Anos asks Gilishris to tell him exactly who he was working for since he had promised to tell him if he lost. Gilishris initially refuses, however, and Union coerced him to tell the truth. Anos rightly guesses that Gilishris' boss is the Spirit King and he asks him for the identity of the Spirit King, however, Gilishris refuses to tell him. At the Spirit Academy, Anos receives a signal from Melhais who tells Anos of his plans to broadcast the Avos de Hevia as a scam and Anos is the true demon lord but Nuskalia grins evilly as he watches Anos from a distance. Later on, Anos and the other students gather round in Union who tells them that the next trial would involve the 20 stairs of Junior. Only one of them had a doorway with a staircase that led to the top of the building, and Union further reveals that each candidate was required to choose a doorway. However, opening the wrong door would lead a candidate down a bottomless pit. Sasha and Anna's fan club express their fear of dying by falling down a bottomless pit, but Anna's devises a plan to save them all. Anna's splits the source behind their powers evenly, and they all turn into his clone. While Anos walks up the stairs, he smiles to himself as he realizes that each of his subordinates could easily revive their selves if they fall into a bottomless pit since his source would grant them the power of reincarnation. Lei and Misa arrive at the right stairway and walk down the darkened hall together. They encounter Jenel the hidden wolf who allows them to pass without harming them. Lei and Misa are surprised by this but they walk out of the academy and follow the tumultuous path that leads to a hearthen. Anos finally arrives at the right staircase and he is joined by Lena who arrives through a secret doorway. He questions Lena on how she had winded up in the right room, especially after following the wrong path. But Lena reveals that she had regained memory of a secret doorway which was located at the passageway of every bottomless pit. Anos passes this message across to his subordinates and asks the rest of them to join him at the top. Anos walks down the hallway with Lena and they end up at the spirit forest. He suddenly draws to a halt after sensing the presence of a border. Anos probes around the area for signs of another realm and his search is rewarded as they discover the portal to another realm. After entering the portal, they are surrounded by lush greenery. Lena notices a grave and walks toward it. 
She further reveals that she feels sad for some reason, and she feels like she has a lot of things to say to the corpse in the grave, but she had no recollection of them. Kaelin Jis suddenly steps out of the shadows and Anos is stunned by her appearance. He asks why she was revolting against the other four evil royals and Jis tells Anos that she is annoyed with the spirits because Lord Kihilam has been spirited away under the orders of the spirit king. Lema is puzzled by this revelation, but Anos explains to her that Kahilam Jist had a split personality with two different sources. One of these personalities was Lord Kahilam, but the second is Jist, his lover. But it would seem as though the two had been separated. Jist further reveals that the spirit king is disguised as Evos de Livia and begs Anos to save Kahilam. Meanwhile, Lei and Misa are granted an audience with the spirit king. However, the spirit king refuses to answer Lei's questions unless he battles with him and manages to split his mask in two. Lei and the Spirit King attack each other head on, but Lei is surprised at how the Spirit King predicts all his battle moves. Lei almost loses his life, but Misa rushes to his rescue and grants him the power of love, a power that he had never been privileged to use in his previous life. Lei manages to slash the Spirit King's mask in half, but the Spirit King doesn't honor his promise. Instead, he continues to attack Lei with the help of another villain. Lei is put in a disadvantageous position, and Misa changes to her spirit form to defend him. Lei is distracted by this, and the Spirit King seizes hold of him and Misa. While this occurs, Anos and Lina arrive at the doorway to a hotern, but the hidden wolf Genel refuses to allow them to pass. However, he tells them that he would allow one person to go if they both defeat him. Anos manages to defeat Genel by seeing his true form, but Genel vanishes alongside Lina. Ages orders Anos to follow the path to a hathern, and he also promises to rescue his teammates. Anos is surprised by Ege's kind act, and before he leaves, he tells him that he hopes they don't have to battle in the future. On his way to meet the Spirit King, Anos runs into Gilsiris, and Gilsiris claims to have discovered the equation behind all existence, but he further reveals that he plans on using this technology to kill him. However, Anos defeats Gilsiris with one fatal blow. Anos arrives at the presence of the Spirit King, but he is surprised to discover that Misa is not just the child of God, but her source had now been fused with the Spirit King's source to create Avos Dilhevia. Favos tells Anos that his plan to broadcast that he was the true demon king had failed and Anos was now stripped to a mere demon. After this mind-numbing revelation, Anos returns to his subordinates and tells them how Misa had now become the new Avos Dilhevia. Lei is depressed by this as he believes that it's his fault that Misa had become Avos Dilhevia. However, Anos tells him not to fret and promises that they would get Misa back, but first, he had to find a way to defeat Ovos without hurting her. Anos and his subordinates return to the Spirit Academy for the third trial, but Inunion tells them that there will be no third trial as he has been ordered not to let them go. Anos apologizes to Inunion for his intentions of hurting him as he reveals he has no plans of staying captive in the Spirit Academy. Anos is surprised when Aegis Code suddenly appears and tells Anos that he has rescued his other subordinates from the Hidden Wolf. He tells Anos that some were waiting outside and he reveals that others were on their way to Dilhevia. Anos thanks Aegis for his help and escapes with the rest of his subordinates. He runs into Lena on the way and asks her if she knows of any way out of the Spirit Academy, but unfortunately, Lena reveals that they cannot go down the same path. Lena suddenly has an idea to ask the spirits for help and she calls Tithi and the other spirits and begs them to show them a way out of the Spirit Forest. The spirits reveal that the Spirit King had instructed them not to let them out of the Spirit Forest, but they're convinced to help them because of Lena. After they leave the borders of the Spirit Forest, Anos transports them back to Delsgade. Upon their arrival, Anos and his subordinates are forced to stay hidden. They overhear Elio Ludaul, a formidable demon general, as he asks his troops to capture the demon lord and his subordinates as soon as he runs into them, but Anos is not phased by this, and he steps out of hiding and walks up to Elio. Surprisingly, Elio and his soldiers fall to their knees at the sight of Anos, and Anos is impressed by the fact that not everyone in Delsgade believes that Avos Dilhevia is the true demon king. Elio tells Anos that the royals had gone berserk and were now hurting humans and hybrids. Hybrids were drained of their powers, and their power was in turn used to increase the royals' powers and keep the people under the influence of Avos Dilhevia. Later on, Anos' mother is seen worrying about him. She tells her husband that Anos was wrongly judged and accused of claiming a false identity, but her son has done nothing wrong. While Anna's mother runs down the streets in search of her son, she runs into Amelia who was being attacked by some royals. Anna's mother steps in and the royals attack her but Amelia shields her with her own body. Anna's father steps in but he is hurled away by one of the royals. Just before the royals can make good on their promise to teach Anna's mother a lesson, Anna's arrives and shreds the royals into tiny pieces. He further reveals that they would stay that way until the city was finally free from the clutches of Avos Dilhevia. At Anos' home, Misha notes how odd it is that his father is already up on his feet, especially after receiving such a grueling beating from the royals and Anos revealed that he had imbued his parents and home with a protective spell and they would heal almost instantly if subjected to any physical pain. Meanwhile, 
Anno's mother offers Amelia a bed to sleep in and food to eat, but Amelia protests against this. She is finally convinced when Anibus tells her that the streets weren't safe that night. He also thanks her for saving his mother, and Amelia asks why he's being so nice to her, especially after all she had done in the past. Anno's asked Amelia if she would like to become a royal now that she knew what being a hybrid felt like, but Amelia expresses her displeasure at the thought of this and bursts out crying. After Anos leaves Amelia, he tells his parents that he has some unfinished business to do and he leaves them in the care of his fan club. Anos leads Sasha, Misha, Lei, and some other members of his team to a hidden corner of his house. He tells them that it would lead to the dungeon of his palace and asks them to accompany him to pick up his sword, the legendary Sword of Destruction. Anos and his friends arrive at his castle and Anos conceals their presence with dark magic, but on their way up the tunnel, they run into Revist, Ms. Menu, and Lady Lutch, a member of the Spirit King's army. Anos is stunned when he notices Revis wearing the batch of hybrids despite being a royal, so he gently tugs on his shirt and calls out to him as he passes by. Revis asks Lady Lutch if he can inspect the area a little longer, and Lady Lutch instructs Ms. Menu to join him. After Lady Lutch is out of hearing distance, Anos and his subordinates reveal their presence and Anos tells Revis and Ms. Menu of how Misa had become the second half of Avos Delhivia. He goes on to explain that whenever a half-demon, half-spirit child was born, their source was made with new rumors, and half of Misa's source was based on rumors of Avos Delhivia. He further reveals that to become the real demon king, Avos Delhivia requires the legendary Sword of Destruction, which belongs to the true demon king. Anos instructs Ms. Menu to look into the whereabouts of Avos Dilhivia, Nuskelia, who was disguised as Erdo Maid. Revest offers to create a diversion that would allow Anos to grab his sword in time, and Anos warns him against it. However, Revest would not be persuaded against helping Anos. After Anos tries but fails to convince Revest against this foolhardy plan, so he decides to deceive Lady Lutch by hitting Revest with a spell that could not be healed by magic. Ms. Menu calls for Lady Lutch and tells her that the Demon King was now in the vicinity and he had struck Revis with a force so devastating that it would be hard to heal Revis with magic. Ms. Menu tries reducing Revis' pain but Lady Lutch asks her to leave him for the main time and inspect the area for the Demon King. After Lady Lutch and Ms. Menu leave, Anos unveils himself and heals some of Revis' wounds. He also tells him that he would return soon to heal his wounds but for now, he couldn't heal him fully because he couldn't risk Lady Lutch discovering their treachery. Anos and the rest of his subordinates leave for the treasure room. Anos finally picks up his third, but before they leave, he tells them that he has to go back in time to 2,000 years ago and figure out why his trusted general Shin Reglia had turned evil. After they leap through time, they arrive in town and Anos reveals that he has to hide his source to avoid running into another version of himself, which was existent at this time. Anos and his subordinates walk around the village in search of Shin and Lady Lino, and they discover them in the town square. Ano smiles to himself as he realizes that Shin and Lady Leno had probably gotten close along the way. While they take a walk down the village, Zeshia tells Eleanor that she would like to buy Pop-Tarts, and they stop at a stall to get some. Zeshia ends up buying all the Pop-Tarts, but Leno arrives a while later and expresses her desire to get some as souvenirs for the spirits. Anos allows Zeshi to unveil herself and she walks up to Lino and Shin and gives her two of her Pop-Tarts. Lino thanks Zeshia for her kindness and she resumes her trip with Shin. Anos and his friends go back into hiding and they escort Shin and Lady Lino to the Forest of the Spirits. After they arrive at the Spirit Forest, Lino is surrounded by fairies who tell her that the Forest of Spirits is being destroyed. Lino and Shin are attacked by a couple of wolves but Anos and Misha help them from the background. After they were done conquering the ferocious beasts, Lady Lino stares in Anima's direction and realizes that there's a strange presence in the spirit forest. She asks the stranger to reveal himself and Anos comes out as a no-shoe political. Lino is amused by him cause he seems like he tells Lino that he owns a circus troupe and they had been walking around the spirit forest to learn more about Lina. Anos asks Leno if she knows anything about her, but Lino refuses and asks Anos to see her privately. She tells Anos that they can stay for as long as they want, but he must never tell Lina of her true identity. Leno further reveals that Lina is the love fairy Fran as she must not recall her memories or she'll fade into nothingness. While Anos and Leno discuss this, they're suddenly attacked by another monster and Anos begs Shin to give Lei a sword. Shin initially refuses to give him, but he eventually gives Lei the sword. To Shin's bewilderment, Lei defeats the monster and Shin asks why did me take part in the Great War. But Lei tells Shin that while he enjoys fighting, he hates war. Shin thanks Lei for his help and tells him that he can have the sword for as long as he is in the forest. The group presses deeper into the forest with questions on the unforeseen dangers that Lei await in the spirit forest.